Welcome back, hackers. In today's video, we're diving deep into Python and exploring one of the most intriguing hacker techniques, changing the MAC address. Yes, you heard it right. Python is not just for coding enthusiasts, it can also be a powerful tool for hackers. So, grab your hoodies and get ready to learn how to use Python to manipulate your MAC address and gain full control over your network activities. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Stay tuned for some mind-blowing Python tricks that will leave you in awe. So I want to teach everything by example. Therefore, we're going to cover the basics as we write our first program. Now, the program that I want to write is going to be a MAC address change. MAC address stands for Media Access Control. It's a permanent physical and unique address assigned. Network interfaces by the device manufacturer. Whether you're rocking a wireless card or a wired Ethernet card, each one of these network cards comes with its very own special address, making it one of a kind in the world. Now, here's the cool part, this address stays the same no matter what. Even if you unplug it from your computer and plug it into another, that network device will always carry the same address. Unlike IP addresses that identify computers on the internet, MAC addresses play a crucial role within a network, helping devices communicate with each other. Every piece of data or packet sent within the network contains both a source MAC and a destination MAC. Picture it like a unique letter with a sender and a recipient. This physical uniqueness to each network device is what makes changing your MAC address a powerful tool for anonymity on the network. But it doesn't stop there, MAC addresses often serve as gatekeepers. Filters use them to decide which devices can connect to networks and perform specific tasks. Changing your MAC address to mimic another device allows you to bypass filters, connect to networks with specific MAC address restrictions, and even fly under the radar, keeping your identity hidden. Now, you might be wondering, how do you change a MAC address? It's surprisingly simple. I'll show you how to do it manually. Plus, we'll explore how to write a Python program to make this process even smoother. Let's jump right in. Alright, let's kick things off by using the ifconfig command to get a comprehensive list of all the interfaces on our current computer. Now, when I say interfaces, I'm talking about those network cards. Take a look here, we've got ETH0. But hold on, there's a twist, it's not a tangible, physical interface. It's a virtual one created by VirtualBox because we've configured this computer to use a virtual network. Remember when I mentioned that this computer thinks it's plugged into a wired network? Well, it proudly says wired connected. The magic here is happening through a virtual network and a virtual interface. Additionally, there's LO, another virtual interface courtesy of Linux. Now, besides just listing the interfaces, the ifconfig command also spills the beans on each interface's details. We're talking connection status, IP addresses, netmasks, broadcasts, and the ever-important MAC address. Currently, the MAC address for ETH0 is right here, highlighted for emphasis. So, let's spice things up a bit and change this MAC address. We kick off with ifconfig, followed by the interface name. In this case, we're targeting the universally present ETH0. We then type down to gracefully disable this interface. Hit enter, and if you don't see any errors, you're golden, the command worked. Now that the interface is disabled, it's time to tweak its settings. We're setting our sights on Ether, the option responsible for the MAC address. Using ifconfig again, specify the interface name, add hw ether, and insert the new MAC address of your choice. Remember, it's got to be 12 characters, separated by colons. Hit enter, and no errors mean smooth sailing. The finishing touch, re-enable the interface. Another ifconfig, this time specifying the interface name and up to give it the green light. Hit enter, and if error-free, the command did its job. One last check with ifconfig to ensure our MAC address has indeed undergone a transformation. And voila, the other part of ETH0 now proudly flaunts its changed MAC address. As you can see, it's a breeze to pull off. And why bother with this manual process? Well, I'm laying the groundwork for you to grasp what a MAC address is and how to alter it. Now, we're taking it up a notch and writing a program to automate the MAC address change. Okay, so now that we've got a solid understanding of what a MAC address is and how to manually change it, let's take it up a notch. We're going to dive into writing a Python program or script that automates this MAC address change for us. Now, I get it. You might be thinking, Python, I'm not familiar with it. But fear not. Learning programming can be a breeze when you have a purpose, and that's exactly why I'm here to guide you through it, step by step. Now, considering what you've learned so far, changing the MAC address involves running some commands. So, to build a program that does this, we need to execute Linux commands through our Python script. Enter the subprocess module in Python, a handy tool that allows us to run system commands seamlessly. 
Python is versatile, and there's usually a module for anything you can think of. Subprocess comes to our rescue when we want to execute commands. The beauty is that it adapts based on where you run the script. Whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, Subprocess ensures compatibility. Now, let's demystify using the Subprocess module. But before we dive into the how-to, I want to introduce you to the module's documentation. Every Python module has documentation that provides insights into what it does, functions included, usage examples, and best practices. It's a great habit to explore documentation to understand modules thoroughly because no one course can cover everything. This journey involves reading, experimenting, and familiarizing yourself with how these modules work. Our focus is on the subprocess module, specifically the run function. This function allows us to run system commands, making it the perfect fit for our MAC address changing script. It runs commands in the foreground, ensuring the script waits until the command finishes before proceeding. Now, let's take a quick look at how to use it. The run function can be executed in two ways. We'll start with the second method, where you simply type subprocess.run, followed by the command you want to run, and finish with shell equals true. It's incredibly straightforward. Now, let's put this into action. I'm going to fire up my Kali machine, open PyCharm, and show you a practical example. I've already set up a project called MacChanger. We'll create a new Python file and name it macchanger.py. Starting off with the shebang at the top. Our first step is to import the subprocess module. Import subprocess tells Python that we're tapping into this module's functionalities. Now, let's leverage the subprocess module by typing subprocess, and witnessing PyCharm suggest all the functions available. Spotting run is the function we need, we hit enter, and it fills in the brackets, providing us with a description of how to use it. We're ready to roll. So, we've got the hang of changing our MAC address using these three commands, ifconfig, eth0, down. ifconfig, eth0, hw, ether followed by the new MAC address, and finally, ifconfig, eth0, up to enable the interface. Let's streamline this process into a Python script. I'll close this window first. Our script will run these commands for us automatically. Here's how we'll do it. We're going to use the subprocess module, which we've imported at the beginning. We'll employ the run function within the subprocess module. This function allows us to execute system commands, and since we're on Linux, these commands are Linux commands. Let's break it down. First, we put the interface down using ifconfig at zero down. I'll use Ctrl D to duplicate the line for convenience. Next, we set the new MAC address with ifconfig at zero hw ether followed by the desired address. Finally, we bring the interface back up with ifconfig at zero up. Super simple, right? Now, when we run this script from the terminal, it should seamlessly change the MAC address without the need for those manual commands. Let's run it. I prefer doing it from the terminal for flexibility. Navigating to the project directory, a quick CD PyCharm projects with tab autocompletion makes it easy. Typing MAC in tab again autocompletes the script name. LS shows our script, and now we execute it with python macanger.py. No errors, that's a good sign. Checking the MAC address with ifconfig eth0. And voila, it changed to the new MAC address. I get it, you might think this is too straightforward, just running system commands. Well, we're just getting started. I'll dive deeper into Python programming basics in the up. This won't be our only script, we're going to spend time building and adding features to it. So, buckle up for an exciting journey into Python programming. Alright, we've got a script now that can change the MAC address of Eth0. But hold on, let's be honest, it's not the most versatile script. It's hard-coded to change the MAC address of Eth0 to a specific one, and there's no flexibility to change it for other interfaces or different MAC addresses without manually editing the code. Let's make this script smarter by introducing variables. Instead of hard-coding values, we'll use variables for the parts that can vary. Before we dive into the actual code, let's get familiar with using variables through a simple print statement. Printing values as you code is a great practice, helping you understand and verify the variable values at different points in your program. First things first, I'll comment out the existing code. You can do this by adding a hash symbol before each line or using control and forward slash for multiple lines. Now, let's print a notification using a variable for the interface name. Here's how we do it. In this example, interface and new Mac are our variables. They're strings, indicated by the characters enclosed in quotation marks. Print, open bracket changing Mac address for plus, interface plus, two, plus, new Mac, cloth bracket. 
the print statement combines these variables with constant strings to form a meaningful message. Then if we run this command, it will print this text. Now, let's incorporate this idea into our script. I'll uncomment the original code. If you need to uncomment, you can manually remove the hash symbols or use control and forward slash. For every part where we had hard-coded values, let's replace them with our variables. For instance, by using variables, we've made our script more adaptable. If you want to change the MAC address of a different interface or use a different MAC address, you just need to update the variables at the beginning of your script. It keeps your code clean and easy to manage. Now, what we've done so far is pretty good. We can use variables now to change the MAC address to any MAC address we want easily, and to any interface. But every time the user wants to change these variables, they have to open the code, they have to open the program and modify its code manually, which is not very good. It'll be nicer if we can get the user to input the variables that they want through the terminal. So, there are a number of ways to do that. And in this video, we're going to talk about the input function. All we have to do is just use the input function like, put a string that will be displayed to the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something within our cool code and ask the user to enter the interface and the new Mac and then use it in here. We already have a variable called interface and all we have to do instead of initializing it like this, we want the user. Instead of initializing it and saying f0 here, we're going to say the interface is going to equal to the input that the user will give me. And inside this, we're going to put the text that the user will see. So we're going to ask for the interface. Same goes for the Mac. Instead of initializing the Mac within the code like this, we're going to say new Mac is going to equal to and I want that to be taken from the user input. So we're using the input function and I want the user to see a message asking for the new Mac. So in that message, I'm going to say new Mac. That's it. We're going to start this and let's run it and see what it's going to look like. Python MacChanger.py And as you can see, the program will not execute further code. It'll stop and it'll first ask me for the interface. We set that to F0. Now the code will stop again and it asks me for the new Mac. So we're going to set that to whatever you want Mac. And now it's already the code has already initialized interface with F0. Once I hit enter, it's going to initialize new Mac with the value that I just inputted, which is the new Mac. And it's going to use it in here and in here exactly the same way as before. So let's set enter and see what happens. It's printing the right print statement for us. So it's telling us that it's changing MAC address for F0 to this MAC address. So again, the print statement, it's a really good way of knowing that interface and new. MAC actually hold the values that we want. So they hold the values that the user did actually input because when your code gets more complicated, you can make mistakes and maybe the variables will not hold the value that you expect them to hold. So let's do ifconfig F0 and see if the MAC changed and as you can see, it actually did get changed to the MAC address that we want. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to introduce the input function that allows the user to initialize variables or interact with the program through the terminal. So, when they run the program, instead of having to manually modify the code every time they need to change a variable. Now, we learned how to allow the user to set variables using the input these are handy, but I think they make more sense if you want to ask the user for something in the middle of the execution of the program, something similar to what the end map does. But I think for a simple program like this one, it would make more sense if we can get our user to input the values as arguments. So what I mean by arguments is it will be cool if we can allow the user to do something. Like python macanger.py and then give me the values by doing interface, set it to f0 and then do mac and give me the new mac. Now if we actually want to implement something like this, it's not going to be easy because, first of all, we need to implement some way of reading all of this, everything that comes after the command. We also need to be able to read the option names or the arguments here. And we need to read the option values, which is F0 and the new Mac. And we also need to display a help message for the person when they don't give arguments or when they ask for help. For example, with all of the known commands, if you just do ifconfig help, you'll get a long menu showing the help and how to use all the arguments that come with the ifconfig command. Today's video will be short and sweet. Your homework assignment is to dive into the Python documentation and replicate what you've learned here. 
For guidance, explore the arg parse module then make it like this. I'm keeping this brief, so let's make it interactive and learn by doing. Get ready to level up your Python skills. Happy coding. If you don't get the solution, put a comment. I hope you like this video. Stay tuned for more tips and improvements in our next video.